Find me a better story right now in the NFL, and there are a lot of good ones, but find me a better one than Taylor freaking Heineke. In fact, how many times have we said that before? I mean, this dude, this dude is the best. The famous, most successful St. Louis Battlehawk. St. Louis Battlehawk. St. Louis Battlehawk. How many times do you think I hit that guy last night with that text? St. Louis Battlehawks. St. Louis Battlehawks. It's James Kelly. Whoa. That's James Kelly who used to appear on this program on Fridays, but then I gave him his own podcast, well, a shared podcast, because of things like that. He says things like, St. Louis Battlehawks. St. Louis Battlehawks. Anyway, <laughs> that dude was bawling out for the St. Louis Battlehawks, but he clearly is the best Commanders QB since the Commanders became the Commanders. What's not to like about this guy? What's not to love about this guy? What's not to hype about this dude? He's got a giant brass set. He wears that brass set right on his sleeve. And most importantly, my guy gets the job done. Doesn't matter how it looks. He just gets the job done. Even against the undefeated Eagles, Heineke went into Philly last night and he broke up that party. I mean, dude does things like that, right? It's almost like he went right to the Philly PD and said, put the lamp post KY down. He told Philly fan to put the horse pies back on ice. He told those old bags down in Miami to pop their stupid champagne and get it over with already. Philly's undefeated season is dead slain by a dude who does it his own way, which often means ways that I have never seen before. He just finds ways to get it done almost every single time. Case in point, how about that clinching play last night that effectively ended the game? It's just such a Heineke move, like, to draw the penalty, you know? A game-winning open field kneel. I'm not sure how many other guys would do that. He did. It's not even that it was just such a brilliant thing or such a great thing. It was just a little bit different, and it worked. It worked for him. It's just what he does. And then he somehow made celebrating a flag for a late hit seem cool when the ref chucked that flag 50 feet in the air. So a brutal way for Philly to lose an undefeated season, but they didn't lose their undefeated season on that one play. That was not a good night for them. They lost the turnover battle. Things did not go their way. In a year when everything has gone Philly's way, you know, it stands to reason there was going to be a night when it did where it did not. And that was last night. And somehow, some way, the right play at the right time was made by the St. Louis Battlehawk. St. Louis Battlehawk. Which Hawks. is what this guy does. It's his deal. He makes the right plays at the right times, and it just keeps working. So now this guy's 3-1 and one this season, 3-1, and 8-4 and four in his last 12 starts. And check this, since 2018, the Commanders are 10-9 and nine when Heineke starts and 19-37 and 37 when everybody else starts. So if it weren't already clear, it should be pretty crystal at this point, Taylor Heineke is the Commanders' QB1. However... Carson Wentz is supposedly set to come back from injury in the next couple of weeks. There's no way in hell I'm going to start Wentz over Heineke. I mean, to me, that's insane. Carson, no offense. See, you can go kick rocks, brah. Not to pile on this dude, but must have been a really... Not to pile on this dude. Whenever somebody says not to pile on this dude, somebody's going to get piled on. Not to pile on this dude... But it must have been a really rough night for Wentz. Watching his backup outplay him against another team where his backup once famously outplayed him. Watching his new team that already doesn't want or need him beat his old team that doesn't miss him at all. So he may have kept his head up, but that could not have been an easy night for him. And then to make it worse... He had to listen to his teammates absolutely gush about Heineke after that game. 
I mean, if you want to hear a case for why Taylor should be the guy going forward, listen to their best offensive player. One of my favorite guys. One of the best guys. One of the best players. One of the best leaders. Scary Terry. One of the best nicknames. Scary Terry, who balled out last night like he always does, and then he heaped the praise on his QB. Terry McLaurin. I mean, that is one of the more positive things. There's more positive things in that one 30-second clip than all the positive things that any group of teammates have ever said about Wentz over the, his entire career. The commanders love this dude, Heineke, as much as everyone everywhere, well, doesn't love Wentz. And the best thing about Heineke is my dude just loves to compete. He'll never say anything other than that. He just wants to compete for the starting gig, and that's what he's all about. All about team, all about competing, never, ever making it about himself. He said as much to me on Radio Row nine months ago that it's always about that. It's about competition. It's about competing. It's about making everybody and everything around him better. I'm preparing for another quarterback battle, and it's it's nothing new in my career. It's been like that since high school. So, you know, I, I welcome it. It makes me better, uh, and I, I think it makes the guy I'm competing with better. So, you know, I'm prepared for it. And, um, you know, again, you know, whatever happens, happens, but I just want to be there. I mean, love this guy. At the time of that conversation, I was wondering aloud if Rivera should make this dude his plan A this season. And clearly that was the move because clearly Wentz was not the move. As for Philly, the undefeated season is now done. Nothing to really overreact to. Games like this happen. They got gashed on the ground. It's not like that's anything new. We know their run defense is an issue. And even despite all that, if not for that weird late hit on that open field kneel, they might have actually pulled this game out of the fire. They had a backwards game for them in the turnover battle. It was just not their night. It happens. And by the way, the commanders are a lot tougher and a lot grittier than they get credit for. As for Philly, they got beat. A loss might not even be the worst thing. In fact, it might be a good thing. And that's not me talking. That is A.J. Brown talking. Anyway, those tired, old, champagne-popping bags in Miami have got a new favorite player. Except I think Philly fan knows the 17-0 was never going to happen. I mean, you might have TV shows, networks, platforms going on and on about, can they run the table? Is this it? You knew that was not going to happen, right? Well, maybe not all Philly fans. There may have been a couple of Philly fans that thought that was, in fact, a possibility. There may have been one Philly fan who knew it was a possibility. You know, that dude who was on ABC6 yesterday. The dude who rolled up to the stadium 15 hours before kickoff and gave an absolutely legendary Philly fan interview. This dude showed up to wait in line for the parking lots and stand in the dark just so he could stare at the stadium. I'm not making this up. I'm not kidding. It's one of the most Philly fan things. Hey, and Philly fan, don't come for me. I, I respect you. I admire you. Part of me wants to be you. But deep down, I know I don't have that kind of heart, but I want it. So I'm not cracking back. This is nothing but respect. It might be the most Philly fan thing, and I know that's hyperbole. Like, what's the most Philly fan thing you've ever heard or seen? That's a really hard thing to answer, right? Booing Mike Schmidt. Booing Santa Claus. Hitting that guy who climbed the lamppost with the tomahawk empty bottle of Grey Goose. Eating horse crap sandos. I I mean, what's the most Philly fan thing ever? It's an impossible thing to answer. So let me just say, this is one of the most Philly fan things I've ever seen or heard. A dude showing up 15 hours early in the darkness just so he could stare at the stadium. My man. Did you hear what he said also? It was not eight hours before the game. It was eight hours before the gates open. So 15 hours before. And why? 5.30 in the morning, in the darkness. Why? Why? Normally I would say, 
Why does anybody do anything? Because all together now, they can. But that's not why. He did it so he could look at the stadium. Quote, you know, like, yeah, I got two pounds of horse pies, four empty Grey Goose bottles, 70 D-cell batteries, Super Bowl, that's how we roll, and I'll be up the light pole. My man, what a legend. What a legend. This guy rolls up eight hours before the gates even open so he can sit in the freezing cold and the darkness and stare at the stadium. This dude is the ultimate Philly fan. He's like the Taylor Heineke of Philly fans. I think that he may even unseat the Philly heckler for Philly fan of the year.